Hello everybody, I'm Nicola O'Brien and I'm a lead educator at Grok Academy. Welcome to this video. Uh, today we're talking about teaching cybersecurity in the primary years. Um, and particularly today we're going to be talking about teaching students about password hygiene, how to choose a good password um, and how to make sure people can't guess your password. Before we get underway, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land where I'm recording today, the Camaragal people. I'd like to recognise the First Nations people of Australia as this country's original teachers and holders of knowledge. This video refers to a range of classroom activities, both online and unplugged. I'll provide links at the end of the video so you can access everything that we discussed today. All the activities I'll be showing you are available free of charge for Australian school students in years three and above. Uh, also, before I get underway, I'd like to thank Google. Their funding under the CS Educator PD Grants Program in 2021 has made the recording and hosting of this series of videos possible in a year where um, we had so many unpredictable twists and turns that we couldn't deliver the face-to-face -face PD we wanted. Uh, we're grateful for Google's flexibility and we're providing these videos as part of our ongoing commitment to computer science education. So in this video, we're talking about passwords and how to teach students about that. We'll be showing some online and unplugged activities that you can use um, and giving you uh, some ideas about the key themes to teach with students. And the key idea that holds this whole this group of activities together is learning what makes a good password. Um, this is really key. Students younger and younger are creating accounts and we know that in the classroom it's often difficult to enforce good password practices, particularly with younger students, where it can take a lot of class time just to get everybody logged in. Um, but um, with more and more of our data living online, it's really important to secure information by choosing good, strong passwords. Um, and we'll look at some examples and teaching ideas to enforce that from a really young age and encourage students to care about protecting their information. Uh, so the first thing that I'll show you today is an unplugged activity, a fun way to start talking about passwords. I'll show you what that looks like now. Uh, we have a worksheet that you can download. It's called Giving Your Passwords Superpowers. Um, I could read through the description of how we play this activity, or I can show you a picture, which I think will really neatly summarize what the activity is all about. Um, just find the right tab. Now, if this game looks familiar to you, uh, it's mastermind. Even if it's not familiar to you, the premise of the game in the physical game is that you come up with a code, a combination of four different colors. Um, you can mix and match. So you might choose two of one color, one of another. Uh, and your partner tries to guess what the code is. And you give feedback step by step as to whether the guess contains the right, num uh, the right color in the right position, the right color in the wrong position, or the wrong color in the wrong position. And over a series of guesses, you can refine in to guess what the code is. Um, the worksheet that we've prepared is for primary school students. We give them three slots, not four. So we initially say pick a number between one and six and a code that's three digits long and guide them through this iterative approach to guessing what the code is. Um, the reason we're doing it, first of all, it's a fun activity to do. It's a nice warm up. Um, but also students might be surprised how easy it is to guess a three number code. Um, and generally within 10 guesses, they can do it. Um, one of the key things we want students to understand with passwords is that long passwords are better. So after they've realized how simple it is, even for humans, let alone computers, to guess a three digit number, you can extend the activity by having them rerun it with a four digit number. Um, or instead of constraining it by numbers one to six, they can try it with numbers one, zero to nine. And they'll start to get this understanding that longer codes are harder to crack. Um, codes with more choices on each slot are harder to crack. And intuitively, they'll understand that when they choose a password, longer is better. Uh, the second part of the activity, um, we want to start bringing in the idea of coming up with passwords that are long, but easy for humans to remember, hard for computers to crack. And so we say, well, we can see a three digit 
code is a terrible password. Three digits takes no time to crack. But we can remember three things in our mind re really easily. So if we remember three words, and in the example, we talk about superheroes. So the example we give is Thor, Iron Man, Spider-Man. So as a human, I can easily remember that combination of three words. Um, but you look at how many characters those three words consist of, and I'm trying to count it as I speak to you. Let's say it's around 20 letters. We know that if we spelt those out as a 20 letter code, it would take a really long time to be able to crack that code. And even for a computer, once we get up to that length of around 20 characters, um, that is very difficult for computers to guess by cycling through all the available options. So the outcome for the students from this activity is short is easy to guess. Let's avoid short passwords. Um, let's try and come up with passwords that are long but also easy to remember. So this idea of combining three words, we call that a passphrase. And it's really great for students if they can come up with passphrases. Um, often the hardest thing with younger primary school students is still remembering to keep that password passphrase secret. You know, if you come up with a really cool combination of superheroes, temptation is to tell your friends what it is. We don't want them to do that. We want them to keep them private. But ideas like sports, food, superheroes, even better combine one of each, get students to think of you know, a favorite animal, favorite color, a favorite food, put that into a passphrase. I could do, you know, giraffe, spaghetti, orange. That's a really long password. And if they remember that even better, that's great. So the first activity in our series is introducing what a good password might look like and using length as a key determinant, length and memorability for a human as aspects of a good password. So that activity might take you around 45 minutes to do. There are some slides here just explaining what it does and let's look at the learning outcome. So we're introducing passwords as being secret codes that we use to protect our information. Um, in the learning outcome here, we say small bits of information can reveal our passwords. So that's the idea when they play the game, once you know one color and, or one number, it's easier to crack the password. Keeping stuff secret makes it more secure. And also another learning outcome there is that long is better and even better something humans can remember. Let's jump into the online activity where we build on that idea about passwords and start to look at other ways we can make good, strong passwords. And I'll jump into the module here. So we step through a series of online challenges. The first thing we introduce students to in the module is that um, common passwords are not good to use for a number of reasons. One, things like ABC123 or QWERTY, they're easy for people to guess. Um, and you don't wanna use a password someone else can guess. They're also used by hackers. They have long lists of common passwords. And what they'll do is just, um, use someone's email or username and try and sign into it using all of these common passwords in case you've been foolish enough to choose a common password. And so we introduce the idea of what common passwords are and tell the kids don't use those, not useful. Um, and in the example here, we give them a whole lot and they have to classify them, is this common or not? And we provide a file with a big list of common passwords um, and give them some recommendations on whether common or rare passwords would be better to use. In the next problem, uh, we introduce a platform called Zinemon, where kids can trade and collect cards. Um, this program, this problem, they look in a couple of places. So the username's been shared in a chat, and then we're looking for the pin to the account. Now our character Fabian in this example has used their date of birth as an eight digit pin. Um, it's fairly common practice, unfortunately, still, and some systems will detect that that's what you're doing and immediately stop you. Um, but here, Fabian not only has used his date of birth as his pin, but he's also got his birthday on his social media profile. And so people can find that information easily. So this example is telling students, don't base your pin or your password on information people can find out easily. And we give a couple of examples for students to have a look at. We have another example where a students use their favorite sports team as their password. And their social media feed is full of them talking about their favorite team. 
again, tempting, something easy to remember, but something other people can find out about you doesn't make for a good password. Now, in the next problem, we introduce students to the idea that they've been hacked. They haven't shared their password. They don't know what's happened. They haven't told anyone how they sign into Fist Bump, which is our social media app. What they have done in this problem, students discover, is they've shared their, they've used they've shared their password in another place. And so, in this conversation, they've been chatting to friends in a group chat. And you can see from our, our social media thing, we have group chats where kids speak to each other. Um, and in this conversation, someone wants to order a new Udi. That's fine. They're going to be out of town. They really want the friend to order it. Um, they have an account on the Udi's website. And so they've shared the password for that website with their friends in a group chat. Now, unfortunately, Mia's also used the same password in her fist bump profile. So by sharing her Udi password, she shared her fist bump password. And we really want students to avoid using the same password in different places. Um, and you can ask the students and have a great discussion about why that might not be a good idea. Um, and the way I like to think about it is that if I'm using a password for my banking and I'm also using the same password at my local pizza shop, I'm pretty sure that my bank has tighter security than my pizza shop. If my pizza shop gets hacked, that's hacked my bank. You know, it's revealed my personal details to my bank account as well. Um, so we need to use separate passwords in different places. Um, we also have a problem where there's been a data leak. And this happens from time to time. Um, in the previous problem, someone had shared their password with a friend and that had allowed another account to be signed into. In this case, um, the credentials have been dumped on the internet and this happens frequently, unfortunately. Uh, again, if you've reused your password in different places and your credentials get dumped somewhere, it's really um, a big security breach that then if you've used that password in other places. So we encourage the students always use different passwords. So you can see what we're doing in our activities around password security uh, is giving students some really uh, actionable ideas about what makes a good password, starting from very simply, not a very short one, don't use common ones, getting into a bit more information, don't base it on things people can find out about you, um, don't share it with other people, don't reuse it give a whole lot of advice and some fun engaging activities that students can then go and share with their friends and family, tell them what they've learned and also use um, the skills they get from this module as they start to create their own online accounts. So that's a quick look at the activities that we have available. I'll walk through some slides here. We've seen those in real life um, and we have some learning outcomes here just to reiterate what I've said. Uh, there are a range of supporting activities that you can access um, once you've done the unplugged and the online activities. Um, in particular, we have a classroom poster which really spells out and reinforces those ideas about what makes a good password. So I'd recommend getting that up on the wall and putting it somewhere prominently, maybe even attaching the image in the school newsletter or something so that families can see also what makes a strong password. Uh, we have a curriculum mapping tool you can access on our website. This is really useful as you start to dig into the key concepts in the Australian curriculum and have a look at what they mean and across the different year levels that you're working with, see some examples, see some expanded definitions of the key terms. And as the Australian curriculum changes in 2022, we'll also update this website to reflect the current version of the curriculum, um, which will be bringing in some new descriptors around cybersecurity and safety. So stay tuned for updates next year, but even still, as you plan your activities, we know most schools won't jump to the Australian Curriculum version 9 immediately for 2022. Jump in here at the moment and you'll get really good ideas about exactly what you need to be covering in the classroom as you introduce cybersecurity and digital technologies more generally. Um, the activities I've shown you today, all available on our website and part of a whole range of cybersecurity challenges and activities available for Australian students. One that I'll call out here for primary school teachers in particular is Grok CyberComp, which happens twice a year. And 
That activity is a timed 45 minute challenge that you can sign your students up to. They'll work through problems covering a whole lot of relevant cybersecurity concepts. Um, and then after around a week, we publish the answers. Teachers will have access to all of their students' results and they can see how their students have gone. And if there are any areas like scams awareness or password security that maybe they'd like to revisit in the classroom. Um, there are some longer form challenges as well. So the problems I've shown you today come from the Cyber Marvel activity. Um, there are some longer activities around information, privacy and sharing and passwords, which you can find on our website. So I'd encourage you to have a look and choose the right length and uh, topic for your students. The posters I've mentioned, please grab those. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Um, hope you've got some ideas for how you can introduce teaching password security to your students. Um, we'd love to hear how you're going. We're on socials. You can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at the Groff Academy handle. Um, and if you have any questions or follow up or feedback, please get in touch with us. Help at groffacademy.org. We'd be, love to hear from you and love to hear how you're getting on teaching password security in your classroom. Thank you.